Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be attempting a puzzle called Chinese Takeaway by Ben 10. I think I have done a Ben 10 puzzle before, but I'm not, I, I should have checked, shouldn't I, before I turned on the webcam. I'm not certain, uh, but what I can tell you is people are loving this puzzle, which is a hybrid of, well, Sudoku, Yin Yang, um, which is a logic problem I'll explain in a moment, and some arithmetic tricks, very much so. There's, there seems to be some negative connotations to yin yang in this puzzle. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll try this in a moment or two. Uh, before we do kick off, I want to recommend all of you to have a go at yesterday's puzzle, uh, which was this one. Walk in the Mist by Directionary. And the reason, well, one of the reasons to have a go at this is a lovely puzzle and it's fairly straightforward to be honest. But Sven has implemented this brilliant thing where every time you solve it, it's increasing the count of the number of solvers. Um, how do I, how do I show you this? If I reload the page, will that do it? Yeah, look, you can see here, it's been solved 9,208 285 times and that's since 8.30 yesterday. It's now 1.30 in the afternoon the following day. So that's in not a lot of time. It's it's accrued nearly 10,000 correct solves. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so directionary is really, um, I think, uh, as, as hit a sweet spot here and, and I promise you you'll enjoy the puzzle and um, we've, we've seen some crazy good times as well I think five minutes is the quickest I've seen so if you do fancy us well who doesn't like fog of war puzzles but do do check that out and increase increase that solution count I'm trying to keep track of the I'm, I keep trying to uh, adjust the video title as well to say you know this puzzle has been solved by 9,285 people um, but the num the numbers increase faster than I'm able to do that um, not clever enough to do it the Tom Scott way uh, right anyway what else do I have to tell you about before before I read you the rules of Chinese takeaway I've got a couple of birthdays to do um, well, firstly it's a, it's a it's a birthday that comes with an apology Ericsson, I'm so sorry. I know your birthday was yesterday and you turned 11 then um, over in British Columbia in Canada. Um, and your mum, Sarah, wrote to us and said that you're, you you know all about the Fistimafel ring and roping, but you grumble when I share the secret. I'm sorry about that, but not everybody knows the secret. You only know the secret if you've been watching the channel and I've shared it with you before. Um, Ericsson, anyway, I hope you had a brilliant day and I hope you had chocolate cake, of course. Um, next, Florian, um, it's your birthday today and apparently you're obsessed with cracking the cryptic nowadays, which I'm delighted to hear. You've turned 22. Um, and I know this because your friends Mona and her boyfriend Lucian wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. So Florian, I hope you have an absolutely great day today. And then finally, I want to say a very happy birthday to Sam. And Sam has not missed a video since February last year, which is, I mean, it's not quite as good as Keith, um, who turned 75 yesterday, but it's still, that's a prodigious amount of video watching you've been doing, Sam. Um, and I also appreciated you telling us that your Patreon sub is the single greatest use to $3 you can think of. You're quite right. Um, oh, Sam, yeah, another, another a tiny birthday present I, ca I, can, uh, I can give you is a puzzle you recommended. Uh, I think has been accepted by the testing. I don't think it was your puzzle. I think, I, th I think it was just a puzzle you really enjoyed. Uh, so you might you might get to see Mark solve that later on today. Um, anyway, Sam, happy birthday! I hope you have a great one. Um, and that's that's all. Apart from a reminder that you've got one week left if you want to enter the competition, um, and that's the competition over on Patreon to solve. May's monthly reward, this incredible Dan Brown-esque Sudoku Hunt stroke novel from Dimono that so many of you have been loving. Uh, closing date is the 20th of May, so do get reading and solving before then if you haven't had a chance to look at it all already. Um, but that's all there is. Let's get on with Chinese takeaway. And these are the rules of Ben Ten's puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Okay, so we've got to put the numbers one to nine once each in every row, in every column and in every three by three box. Shade some cells such that all shaded cells are orthogonally connected and all unshaded cells are orthogonally connected. 
Also, no, by, no two by two area in the grid may be fully shaded or fully unshaded. So this is a logic problem, sometimes called yin yang. And what it means is that when we finished, um, when we finish the grid, I'm going to do the usual sort of extended E here to demonstrate this. Uh, so let's say that they're shaded and these cells are unshaded or blue. Oh, I'm making, making a very pretty mess of this. This would be a valid arrangement of the grid because you can see that all of the fluorescent green cells are connected to each other orthogonally. Orthogonally just means shares a long edge. Um, so if we were to add this in as a green cell, this, this, this cell is not orthogonally connected to all of the green cells. It touches them at a point only, and that's not good enough. And also, if we stare at the grid, I don't think you'll be able to find a two by two area that's fully green or fully yellow. So the yellows are obviously all orthogonally connected as well. So a green here would not only break the green rule, it breaks the rule that says all the yellow cells have to be orthogonally connected. Um, so it would be utterly wrong. Um, but that is not the end of the rules. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Now that looks tricky with this cage, for example, which adds up to one. But the reason is that digits in shaded cells will have a negative value towards any sum in a cage. And then cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. Not all possible dots are shown. So those two have to be consecutive. So if we worked out that was a one, this would have to be a two in order to be consecutive. If this was a two, this could be a three or a one in order to be consecutive. But fundamentally, we've got thinking to be done, haven't we, about these cage totals because let's just have a think about this one cage for a moment. So if it was two now, which way around is it? Is it shaded cells that negate? Shaded cells are negative. So if we had two shaded cells and one unshaded cell, and we make this an eight, say, then what we're saying is that those two cells have to add up to seven because they count negative and that would reduce the total of the digits in the cage to a value of one, which is what we're required to do. So it's a very interesting twist on yin yang. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I think, although, although Ericsson doesn't like me revealing the secret, I think I have to share with you the secret about yin yang. There are two, well, there are a couple of secrets about yin yang. Um, but the, mo the fundamental and most important secret is that when, we sh when we're doing the shading in this grid, we must never create a checkerboard pattern. And that's because of this rule that requires orthogonal connection between colored cells. So you can see here that in order to orthogonally connect these two unshaded cells, we'd have to take some path or other. We'd either go around this way or we'd go around this way to do that. But whichever way we go, you can see a cell, a gray cell gets isolated and that won't work because we can't connect this gray cell now to this gray cell orthogonally. Um, so we can't have a checkerboard and that leads to some very interesting properties around the perimeter of yin yang puzzles. Um, basically, you could only have one stripe of green and one stripe of gray. And that's because imagine we tried to then have a second, a second instance of gray around the perimeter. Well, the implication now is that once I attach this gray to the rest of the gray, however I do it, whatever complicated path I take in order to achieve that connection, this green cannot connect to this green using orthogonal connections anymore because there will be a wall preventing it, a wall of gray. Um, and therefore, the perimeter in a yin yang puzzle has just one stripe of one color and one stripe of the other. That's all we're allowed to put in it. Um, now, I've said all that. And now I'm going to take a look at the puzzle properly um, where I'm looking at this cage and surely that cage has to be completely real. I mean, 24 is the maximum we can make three digits add up to. So all of these digits have to have to count, don't they? Now that means I'm going to get this wrong over and over again. It's shaded cells have a negative value, right? So these are unshaded cells and they must therefore be green. 
and I'm guessing we have to do something with the perimeter, but I'm not sure. I mean, this 11 cage can't be fully green now because that will create a two by two of greens here, which we're going to have to avoid. Yeah, OK. But what we can do, I think, is at least think about what we can. I think we can think about um, this cage and this cage because there's something going on between these two. The, each of these cages has to have a grey cell in it because I can't make three cells add up to one without one of them being negative at least, and I can't make three cells add up to three without one of them being negative at, at least because one plus two plus three is six. It's not three. So there is a grey cell in there. I don't really know how to shade this. I'll do it like this. And there's a grey cell in there. Now remembering that we can only have... Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, this is clever. All right, this is clever. Okay, so remembering we can only have two stripes of colour in the perimeter, we've got to be a bit careful now because... Um, if if we are to connect the grey that exists in this three cage and the grey that exists in this one cage around the perimeter this way, which is one way we could do it, then this 13 cage and this 9 cage and this 6 cage would be full of greys and that that's no way to get to a positive total, is there? So we can't connect... We can't connect the greys around the perimeter this way, so they must connect along the top of the grid, which means these three squares must be grey, this must be grey, and this must be grey. And actually, I see what this is going to do, because now, let's think about, let's think about unshaded cells. Is it true there's an unshaded cell in this three cage? Well, there's at least one unshaded shaded cell. And we now know that, that must, this must be unshaded, because if this is grey, and we make this green, we're going to have to connect this grey to this and we're going to have to go around the perimeter, which we've already shown is not, not correct. So this cell must be green, and for exactly the same reason that cell must be green. And now how do we connect the greens together? Well, we've got to, we've got to do this, because any interruption, again, if we made this grey, for example, when we connect this grey up here, this green is isolated, so we can't do that. And now we're away, aren't we? Because we've got a great big, well, we've got a huge, great swathe of unshadedness in the grid. Um, and we can avoid two by twos in a whole raft of places. So, right, so this three cage now is two digits, which must be at least a one, two pair. And that, so that's these are adding up to at least three. And then this square, which must therefore be at least a six, I want to say. So this is six, seven, eight or nine, I think, in the corner. It looks like it's trying to have some relationship with the 24 cage, doesn't it? We could end up with just a whole load of in, uh, sort of inequalities in the grid in the sense that this digit must be three three greater than this digit. Um, do I know what colour this is? No, no, actually, I really don't. I think that cell is very unknowable. Right, let's, let's try and do the edges then, where we've got cages. A six cage is either one, five, or two, four. Um... My phone is buzzing at me. I think that's okay. Uh, uh, that's a nine cage, which is fully... Ah, okay, this square's got to be uh, grey. And that's because if this cell was green and we had a one-two pair here, you couldn't make the nine cage work because it would be at least three plus four plus five, which... I, here is a knowledge bomb. I haven't done many knowledge bombs recently. That's a knowledge bomb. 3 plus 4 plus 5 adds up to 12, not 9. Um, so this square has much got to be grey.
Ah, all right, here's another here's another little bit of arithmetic. I'm not sure whether Ericsson's going to like this one, but we'll try. Um, that's a 13 cage and that's a 9 cage and all of those digits are positive counting. So those six cells add up to 22. Well, I happen to know a secret. <laughs> Sorry, Ericsson. <laughs> the secret is that the whole row of a Sudoku adds up to 45, something I share with my favorite people. <laughs> and um, if these squares add up to 22, those three digits add up to 23. Therefore, to make 45 and 23 in three cells has got to be 6, 8, 9. Now, you can't, and you can't put 7 in a 9 cage. So there's a 7 over here somewhere. And there's a 3 over here somewhere. And the other two digits in each of these cages are sharing one of the ways of making up to 6. Ooh, so there might be some shading we have to do between 6s. If this cell isn't a 3, and it would, be, I hope it's a 3, because it would be a 3 in the corner then the version of six in the nine cage is not the same as this one, but this one would go in there. Um, oh, hang on, this, <laughs> this, this is shouting at me. We've got a five cage here where one of the digits is a positive six, eight or nine. So that's, that's not gonna work. That's got to be unshaded. One of these at least has to be green. And be positive. I mean, every, every cage has to have green in it, doesn't it? I don't know if that's a sensible, a sensible thing to note or not. Um, right, seven. Where's seven in this box? It's not on the white dot because it would have to be have a consecutive digit with it and the six and the eight are not available to go on this. I can't put seven in there because even nine minus seven is definitely not as much as five. So seven is in one of those three cells. Now, does that mean it? Uh, I think that means wherever it does go, it's got to be positive. If it was negative anywhere, it would it would break these six cages. Um, ah, sorry, I can't quite work that out. This has got to be three greater than this. It's got exactly the same profile as that one over there. But really all we're saying there is that that's I mean, that can't be four, it would break the nine cage because it would make this a one and then this couldn't be two, three, four or one, three, five. We've got, I mean, there's an awful lot of gray cells that need to be included in this little um, septuplet of, uh, of cells because, well, on the face of it, those seven cells are adding up to 16. And we know the triangular number of seven is 28. So there's, there's quite a lot of reductions that are necessary over there. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm meant to do yin yang now or. I mean, how do I do yin yang from here? I could. Do we know? Those two squares are a maximum of a five, six pair, which is not as much as 16. So this has got to be green, doesn't it? There's no way if this is negative. Yeah, that, that's definitely got to be green. We can't, we can't get to 16 if this is negative. But these, if one, if only one of these is green, that's still not going to work, is it? Because the maximum I can make, let's make this green and this gray. The maximum this digit can be a six. The maximum this digit can be as nine. That's only 15. And I've still got to deduct something. So there you go. Right. This, this is a fully green 16 cage. And now this square is gray and this gray has to connect to its friends. So this square is gray.
Um, <laughs> okay, and now, and now what do we do? Let me think. I, I'm not sure. I am not sure. How do I know what this is? Oh, I actually, hang on, I know what, the, what this is, not by maths. I've been trying to do maths just now on row one, but I, I can use the two by two rule. That's got to be gray. Well, that's gonna, ch and that's going to change the maths I was trying to do on the, on the first row. Because now, I don't think this is secret maths. This is sort of just triangular maths. Those, the triangular number for four is 10. One plus two plus three plus four. So the minimum value of the negative cells uh, in cages, these, these cells, is 10. But we know that overall, the positive total that we've got to, so we're deducting at least 10, but we need to get to exactly four overall. So these two squares must add up to at least 14. So this digit, I see it can still be a five. That's really annoying. I thought I thought I was onto something there, but I think this could still be a five and go with a nine here. And it would add up to enough if this was exactly equal to one, two, three, and four. Oh, bobbins. All right, that's this. This is not. This is not. This is not good. Well, it's, it's not necessarily bad thinking, but it's not how to solve this puzzle. Um, right. So, where do we think the trick is? It's funny. I mean, it's hard to see where the yin yang pressure actually lives, isn't it? Maybe. Hmm. I oh, know. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, is it got? Is it something to do with the seven down here? If the seven is in the six cage, right? This would be one one positive seven and a negative one, wouldn't it? It would have to be that. If the seven is here, that's got to be positive because this is negative and we... Yeah, we can't have negative seven and negative whatever this is and make this positive enough to get to a total of six. So this would be positive. Oh. Ah, right, hang on. No, forget forget sevens. This cage is what where we need to look, I think. This is very, very peculiar. <laughs> but is it true to say that two of the cells in here have to be grey? And if that's true, I know exactly what the composition of this cage is. That's really pretty. That is really pretty. I think this is right. If this cell is green, then to avoid a two by two, I have to make this gray. And that puts two grays in this cage. But if this cell is gray, then there's already two grays in the cage and that's got to be green. So this cage, well, one of these is gray, one of these is green. But the, the, the fact there are two grays in means they must be a one, two pair in gray. And the positive digit must then be a nine which is offset by one plus two, which is three, to get us to six. So this cage is one, two, nine. That square is not nine, because in fact, that square is not nine. This is six, eight, nine, triple. So this is negative and it's not seven. Oh, this is massive. This is absolutely massive. So this is nine, it's positive. This is gray, negative. And now there's a seven in my six cage which must be the positive digit. So this, this, this is a one seven pair, don't know the order, but that means this square here is a two, which means this square here is a one. And now this nine cage is not one, three, five, it's two, three, four, which means this seven cage 
is 157. And therefore, and therefore, we can argue next that, well, there's got to be an even number on, on a white dot. A white dot, this is the secret of white dots. It's a very mundane secret, but it's, it's actually weirdly useful often. Um, a white dot has always got to have a, an even number and an odd number because it's a consecutive pair of digits. But look here, we've got two six and eight already accounted for so there must be a four on here with a three or a five. Oh, i see but i can get oh sorry i could have just done the maths on this probably what oh this can't be six because that would need to be a one to get back to five right so this square here is oh well ah that's no this is lovely i should have done it this way round. look um hang on this this domino adds up to five and this is nine or eight so if this is nine this is four to get the maths to work but the four is a hypothecated to the white dot so that doesn't work so this has got to be eight that's got to be three ah so this white dot becomes a four five pair these two squares become not eight so these are a six nine pair and therefore 7 by Sudoku is going here. Whoops. Uh, these squares, oh, we might be able to get this. Might be able to get this one to work. Uh, we've got to put 5, yes, 5, 6 and 8 into these squares by Sudoku. But two of them need to be 3 apart. Well, that's going to have to be 5 and 8. So we get a 6. And we know the order. <laughs> because, because we know the shading, we know the order. So the 8 must be bigger now oh so now seven and eight come out of this corner and we said those two had to add up to 14 or more didn't we mm, not sure if we can do that let's let's check more down here do we know more of the shading We're, we well we know this is one of each actually maybe i'm going to do that to show me that uh, this cage is a six cage now this cannot have the same sort of geometry as this one can it if this was if this was one two nine so if there is a second shaded cell in this six cage it would be one two nine and that's going to clash with this so this it has not got a second gray in it and therefore that is double green and if that's double green how do you get this gray to connect to its friends it's got to, it's got to get up to at least here this is to avoid a two by two so that's gray i don't oh look we can just use the five and the four to do that okay so now we should look at these cells shouldn't we these have got to be four oh they're all even four six and eight so so hang on that's got to be even then i love i love this sort of i love playing around with parity like this it's so it's so cool right so yeah i know i know if you do see me as a party just steer clear it's the, it's better um <laughs> look this is six is an even number and this is two even numbers one of which is ta being taken from the other so the result of this subtraction whatever it is is an even number so this has got to maintain the parity for it for us to add up to six and therefore it's even and therefore it's two because it's not four six or eight um now we can probably do this can't we I think it looks like it's got to be 2 plus 8 minus 6. I can't see another way that that's going to work. Um, 2 plus 8 minus 4, obviously. Right, so these squares here are 3 and 9. Ah, I see. So we get 3 and 9 here. This square here is now 1 or 7 because it's got to be the complement of 3 or 9 to add up to 10. Uh, can we do any more shading now? We know this square is not an 8. 
the, uh, the corner cell is not a 6. Um, has that done something? <laughs> It's both, well, I suppose it's given me a 7, 8, 9 triple, which could be useful. Uh, so what's this digit then? It can't be that big, can it? It must be at least 4, because we must be 4 minus 1 is the absolute least this could be. So this is 4 or 5 only. can't be 6 because of this. So this square is 1 or 2 only. Um, and that's very useful for the following reason. Come on, brain, think of the reason. If this was, if this was 4-1, what are we doing with the world? If this was 4-1, the minimum value of these two squares would be 2 plus 3. But that's fine, because we then put an 8 in the corner. I know those two digits are the same. Oh, hang on. So there's got so these two digits are the same by Sudoku. So that one of those has got to be over here. Is it? Oh, it's probably necessary to have a high digit in the sixteen cage. Is it? If we have, if we had. Oh yeah, of course it is. If we had no high digit, i.e., no seven eight nine in a fifteen cage. Sorry, a sixteen cage. The maximum the three cells could add up to would be 15 if they were 4, 5 and 6. Well, four, 15 is not the same as 16. So there is a 7, 8 or a 9 in there and it goes exactly there where it is not able to be a 9. So there is a 7 or an 8 here. I wonder if that, if I could prove this wasn't 7, 8, 9. Where are 7, 8, 9 in this box? One could be here, if there's a 9 in the corner. One could be here, one could be here. But if not, you have to put a big digit into the 7, into, into this 1 cage. Oh, I see, you could. You could just do it. If you go 9 here in the corner and a 1, 7 pair, 1 and 7 add up to 8, and that would correct the count. I'm sure that I'm sure there's going to be a reason that doesn't work. Um, but I don't actually know what it is. Okay. Um, okay. So, what should we do now then? Um, I have not got a clue. Is it? I don't. I don't actually know where to look. It's quite embarrassing when you just when you just go head first into a brick wall, which is what it feels like I've just done here. Um. I don't know. Sorry, I've got nothing. What could it be? I don't really... I don't really think... Oh, this three cage now. Okay, the three cage can't be a one-two pair, look. A, a green one-two pair because of this two. So this has got to have... This is sort of one of these situations where this is both digits. There's a positive and a negative digit in there. Um, do I know the nature of this six cage? I don't think I don't think I do. If this was five, is that possible? These two squares would have to add up to four, so this would be five one three. And that would have to be two four nine. Uh, it's all it's all conceivable, isn't it? 
Uh, the 11 cage, I don't think. The 11 cage can't have three green digits here. We said, I think we looked at this earlier, didn't we? Or we worked out it couldn't be four green digits earlier. Well, it, now it can't be three green digits because that's going to create a two by two of greenliness. Okay, so this has got to have one more grey cell in it and two green cells, hasn't it? That's nearly interesting because the two negative cells in here will add up to at least three if they were one and two. And that means the two positive cells have to add up to at least 14. Which, which is great, but it's not, I don't really, I don't even really know how to pencil mark that. Do I know there's a, a low digit in here? By a low digit, I mean a one or a two. If this was, if this was three, four, yeah, that doesn't work. Ah, okay. So there's a one, two pair. Yeah, okay, so maybe I can do something with... I think there must be a 1 or a 2 in here. Because if not, this would be a 3, 4, and we need this to be a 10. So there is a 1 or a 2 in this, in this domino. I wonder if there's actually a better way of thinking about that. Is there a way of... If there's a one or a two here, does that affect this one? Not really. Um, sorry, I'm sure that there, I'm sure there are better ways of thinking about this. I'm just not quite getting to the bottom of it. What's the maximum these can be? The maximum is an eight nine pair, which is seventeen. So the absolute maximum we can deduct if we're going down towards four is 13. So there is definitely a one in, in this four cell sequence because otherwise they would have a minimum value of two, three, four, five, which is 14 and 14 um, negative would require these two squares to be double nine in order to get us up to one plus three, which is four. So there is a one in one of those four cells I don't really know how to pencil mark that um, because I don't want to do it across the boxes. If we knew the one was here, we would know this was two and this was five. But the one could absolutely be here. Well, it could only be here if it's exactly there, actually. It's quite, quite difficult for it to be over on this side. Hmm. Um. Golly, <laughs> I'm stuck. I am stuck. How do we get ourselves unstuck? It's probably there's probably some very simple Sudoku that I've not seen. That's a horrifying thought, actually. I'm just I'm just scanning up and down the grid trying to see if there's uh if there's something obvious to be said about that. Um is there some reason I don't know. Can you put Nine in this box is a bit restricted. It's not in these cells, and I don't think it can be a negative number, can it? Because if nine was negative, we could never make this high enough. So in fact, nine is locked into one of just two positions up here. I mean, it's overwhelmingly likely to go in the corner, I think. Is there a way that we can remove it from that cell? 
not sure. Um, okay, I've got to think of something else. I know I was looking at these two squares trying to work out what the minimum value is. And I think the problem is that I could even I could even include a five. Oh, where does six go? That's a good thought. Where does six go in this box? Six can't go here. I don't think I can put a six in this domino because six plus one is seven and I couldn't make this 10. So six goes here. Ah, that might be a useful thought. Although it's not, I fear it's not doing very much actually. Six is in one of those cells. I don't know the color of this six, do I? I do know those two are the same. Um, so now these squares here are from one, two, three, four, and five. I'm just going to see if I can do any meaningful. I don't think I can, can I? Don't think I'm going to get any meaningful reductions as a result of this. I know these two have a difference of three. This is four and one. This would be two five at least. Sorry, two three adding up to five at least. This would be an eight or a nine. If this is five two, this is one three at least, but that means this can be seven. That would make this seven. No, I'm not get. I don't get it. Don't get it. If that's seven, though, that's nine, which is marginally interesting. If this is five, this has to be a one-three pair, and this would be at least a two-four pair. But then that could be nine, which is fine again. Ah, keep going around in the same circles. Right. Okay. We're going to have to think again. What is it that I'm missing here? This four cage could be a one three cage. Nothing to prevent that in this column at the moment. Do I have to? Is it something to do with eight and se oh, eight and seven? Yes. No, I can still put seven. I could still put seven in this one cage. Seven, one, and that would be a nine, and that's fine. I thought maybe I could prove that this was seven or eight, and that would have been massive, but I don't think I can. Okay, I'm, I think I'm, I'm stuck, <laughs> very much stuck. Where could it be? Have I, have I, I lost track of some shading that I could do very possibly. Oh uh, yeah, okay, look, this little bar of gray has to get out. So one of these is gray, at least. Well, no, exactly, exactly one of those is gray. Because if they were both gray, it would be a two by two. So this is a domino. We know if this is grey, we know both of those are green, and therefore that would be grey. Do I know if that's green, this is grey. If this is grey, we don't know what this is. Um... Maybe I've got to think harder about this 16 cage then. We've got we've got an eight or a seven in this square. So these two squares either add up to eight or nine. But that's loads of ways they could do that. That, that doesn't feel profitable, does it? I don't think so. Um, It feels like there might be a way of limiting this square. 
because I don't want there to be too many low digits used up in this domino. It feels like, I mean, how, how low does this digit need to be in the 11 cage? We know there's another low digit to come in as well, isn't there? So if this was as much as five, we would have five plus a one in the other gray cell is six. And then we'd need eight and nine. Okay, so this cannot this can be five, but I don't think it can be any higher than that. So that's one, two, three, four, or five. And it's not three. So it's now one, two, four, or five. So if this was five, we know this is a one, three pair. Two, four, that makes this a five. Um but I can't I can't disprove it is the problem. Does it matter that I know that one of the no, this is the same as this, isn't it? I think there was another three cage somewhere, that one. So we've got lots of these bicolored three cages. This one cage, I mean this is so open. I really think it's not this. Do I know what this 10 cage is? If this 10 cage is 9-1, knocks a 9 out of the corner. I think that's okay, isn't it? That might make this have to be a 9. Maybe it's the case that one of those has to be a 9. What do we know? I think 8-6 I think might work with 14. Yeah, because then we could make those 1, 2, 3 and 4. So no, it's not necessarily the case. There's definitely a one in the corner. Um, seven, three down here, is that a problem? Not sure. Oh, my phone's buzzing. Uh, nothing important. Um, I don't know, I'm baffled. I'm not the baffled king. Uh, I'm not in the song Alleluia. I am just baffled. I'm the baffled Simon. Uh, what am I missing? What am I missing? Ericsson, can you help me? I would like, I'd love you to tell me what I'm missing here. I think I'm missing something to do with um, I don't know. I'm not. I, I'm not even. I'm not even sure I understand where I should be looking. Is there some way I know the order of this? Would it matter if I did? If this was green and that was grey. I mean, that's making this a seven, isn't it? And this a one putting a tiny bit of pressure on the three cage. If this is green and this is gray, then that becomes green by two by two logic. And that doesn't matter at all. No, no. Okay, I, do, I dispute that it's something to do with the bottom of the grid and the shading down here. So it's probably either to do with the shading at the top of the grid, which it could be, but I don't really see how, or it's to do with the maths of the top of the grid. And that is where I feel I haven't quite got a handle on this. I mean, if that's whatever this is, four, one or two, five, it's doing something to this cell, but not in a way that actually lets us know what this, how this six cage is working. I mean, 4-1 here seems very difficult to me. Not impossible, but, but difficult. 4-1 makes this have to be... No, it doesn't. It doesn't even make it that have to be anything. Does it rule 5 out? Yes, it does. If that's 4-1, you can't have 5 in here. 
So this simply has to be 2, 3. So this would be a 1, 2, 3, 4. This would be a 5. And that... So if this is 4, 1, you get a 5 here. Oh, well, that's, that's important, actually. It's knocking us. Wow. Okay, here is a thought. This is not that straightforward. I think there can't be a 5 here in this box. And that is for a weird reason to do with this cell. Which is that if this cell is 4, 1, I need this to be 2, 3 to give me a chance of getting up to the correct total here. It, well, the simple thing to see is if this is 4, 1, you can't put a 5 here because it would be at least 5, 2 and then you need a 10 here. So if this is 4, 1, you've got to put 5 here. If this is not 4, 1, it's 5, 2 and there's, there's a 5 here. So there is a 5 in one of those two cells, which means there's no 5 up here anymore. And there is... I think this is interesting because there's now a 1, 7 pair in this column and that cell in the corner is not a 7 anymore. So that cell's not a 7 anymore. There's definitely a 7 in this domino. We know those had to add up to at least 14, didn't we? Okay. So has this done anything? <laughs> has it done anything at all? Um... I'm not sure. If this is 8, these there's loads of ways that can add up to 5. If There's not that many ways this adds up to 6 anymore, is there? So if this is 9, this has to be 2, 4. Oh, is that it? Is that it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So if this is nine in the corner, then I think by maths, this domino adds up to six. It can't be double three for obvious reasons. So it's got to be a four, two pair. Now, once that's a four, two pair, how do you make this three, this three cage work anymore? If this is two, four up here, this can't be four, one and it can't be five, two. So there'd be no way it could work. So this, this is 8 in the corner, which means that's 8. Which means one of those two cells is 8. These two squares add up to 5 now. But so we, and we don't know how that works. That's either 2, 3 or 1, 4. Do I have the same? No, I don't. I was just thinking, can I do pull the same trick and work out which way around this five goes? But I can't, can I? Two, three means this is four, one. One, four means this is five, two. And both of those things work. Ah, bobbins. Um, okay, so if this is eight, ah, we know that can't be five anymore because the minimum sum we worked out for those four squares was, was 10. So this is either 14, and this is a very specific 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple with a 5 here. Or this is 9, and then, and then what? And then we know these squares are, are adding up to 13, but we know they are add up to 5, so these would add up to 8. Can I do anything with that? If this is 6, I know these add up to 5. And they'd be the opposite way around to that. 6, 5. Wow. I thought we were, I thought we were on, on, on a good track there for a moment or two. But it appears that we've ground ourselves to a, an unfortunate halt. Um, okay, <laughs> so what is it? Am I, is it just going to totally, is it going to totally bamboozle me again? Probably. Do we know more about the 11 cage than we used to now? There's an 8 in the box. 
hang on, didn't we have, didn't we work out some cells in this 11 cage had to add up to at least 14? If that's true, we know there's a 9 in this cage now. Let me think about that again. So these three squares, if they were, if they were green we said that was impossible because that would be a two by two of green so there is there is exactly one more gray to come there can't be three grays in in 11 because we can't make the other cell 17 so there is one more gray somewhere and if they were a, if the grays were a one two pair we need 14 yeah so there is a nine there is a nine in here and the nine must be in one of those cells now by sudoku because it can't be here and therefore that is not a nine which makes that a nine in the corner that is not the way round I wanted that to go. Okay, but that's, so these add up to eight now. Because we know they add up to five. Oh, hang on, is that wrong? Have I got my maths wrong there? I've got 17. Yeah, no, this is right. 17 minus the 4 that we need overall positive is 13. So I'm deducting 13, but I know those add up to 5. So these do add up to 8. Okay. Um, so if this was a 2-3 pair, this would be a 1-7 pair. And we would know the order. I'm going to put this in. Um, whereas if this is a 1-4 pair, uh, this is not then 1-7. So this is 2-6 or 3-5. So the five or the six, the five would be here, the three would be here, or the six would be here and the two would be here. So these are the total number of options for this nine cage. Which, oh, golly, golly, gosh. Okay, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um... Does anybody know how to do it? Not me. Um, okay. Goodness me. This is seriously challenging, actually. Um, I think, I think as well, I may well have missed something embarrassing because... I think this puzzle had three stars out of five when I looked earlier on Logic Mercer's Germany. It feels, it feels much harder than that. Uh, whilst I will say being still fascinating. So it's it's a it's a brilliant puzzle the way I'm doing it. I just fear that I might well have missed two or three tricks that would have made it a little bit more tractable for me. Right. Okay. If this is one one seven, that's no longer a one. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's not a two either, is it? Because remember we worked out there was a one, two virtual pair between those three digits in box one. So that's not a two. So this is three, four or five. I don't think that matters. I don't think we really understand anything about. Do, do we understand or not? If this is two, three, this is four, five, and this is one, and that's four, and that's five, and that's, ah, um, I know that I need at least 14 in here, didn't I, along with my nine, so my nine, my nine needs a five, six, or seven with it. I make that if I make this a one or a two do I get into trouble oh I, I know this isn't a one because remember that we thought earlier those squares had to add up to 13 didn't we in this in this variation that's one way of thinking about it those four squares in the same row have to add up to 13 they can't therefore be two three four five because that would add up to 14 so this square is now two four or five And if it's five, oh, if it's five, I've got to partner it up with at least a one, and that's six. And 11 plus six is 17. And I can't put nine and eight in the cage, so that's not five. Right, so this has come right down now to two or four. Come on. Right, so... 
Right, so this, this, this domino is either 1, 4 or 2, 3. So between those three squares, there is a 2, 4 pair somehow, some way. These, these three squares contain the digits 2 and 4. So that, this is not a 2, 6 pair now. Ah, oh, it's close. Ah, uh, that doesn't mean this can't be a 1, 5 pair. Ah, oh, it's close to being absolutely magical, isn't it? It really is. Come on, Simon, one more. I think one more deduction in this top row. I fear this is where I've missed the trick, actually. I think there's probably some maths I could have done or something that would have completely revelated what's going on. Where's six in the top row? It's got to be in one of those squares. So six is in one of these three squares. Oh, no, it's not. It's in one of those two squares. Now, can I put 6 in this 16 cage? Then I'd need the other two cells to add up to 10. So they would need a 2 or a 3 in here, which looks absolutely fine, actually. If we put the 6 here, do we run into any bothers? 6 is in one of those three squares. No, no bothers. Um, Ah, I should take my own advice. I should take my own advice. Right. I'm going to look at this dot now. Because this dot, I think... I hesitate to say how long this has been available for. But this this is rather a beautiful dot now. This is This is perhaps the most beautiful dot I've ever seen. Because it must have an even number on it. What even number is on this dot? Well, it's not 2. It's not 8. And it's not 6, which I've just pencil marked up there. So there is a 4 on this dot. And therefore, that square is a 2. And if that square is a 2, the world will clarify itself. This is not a 2-3 pair. This is a 1-4 pair. And we know the order. Which means this is 2, this is 5, and this is 3. And this is 9, and this is 1, and this is 7. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and this is 1, and this is 5. And this is 3. And this is Five now so that's three it is still working what have we got there six and seven in the top row um, wow that was really in is fascinating if, if this black dot having a four on it or sorry white dot having a four on it was an intended step that is just fantastic um, this is right there's an eight over here now come on well, okay, look, there's a 7-8 pair in this box as well, I've just seen. This square is not a 2 or a 5, so this is 1 or 4, so this square here is 2 or 5. Um, 2 is in one of those cells. What's the other possibility? 1 or 4 up here. We've got to, if we put 1 in there... Yeah, we can't put... Oh, well, okay, we can't put one in the 16 cage, can we? Because the other two digits will have to add up to 15, and there's no way to do it, given we can't avail ourselves of a 9, and the seven, this 7 or 8 is not living in the 16 cage. So the 1 is indefinitely in one of these two cells in this box, which does nothing. <laughs> it means 1 is in one of those two squares. Um, can we put... No, we might be able to put 2 in, actually. It could be 2, 6 with 8. I can see that straight away. If this was 7, I need 9 here. Which, oh, that looks tricky. 1, 8, 2, 7. 3, 6, 4, 5. Doesn't work. Right, this is not 7. Because there's no way to make this domino add up to 9 if I put 7 here. Because 1, 8 isn't available. 2, 7 isn't available. 3, 6 isn't available. And 4, 5 isn't available. So this is 8. This is 7. These two squares are either a 1-7 pair, which they're not, a 3-5 pair, which they're not, or a 2-6 pair, which they are. So that's a 6-2 pair. These two squares now just become a 1-4 pair, which means there's no 4 in the corner. Still the possibility of a 3 in the corner. Um, now, he says, trying desperately hard to work out what this means, uh, 
and failing miserably. Probably. Well, hang on. What's the digit that? Are, what's the high digit in the eleven cage that accompanies the nine? It's got to be a five. Because there are only well, we can't put four in. It would have to be nine three otherwise. But we know there are two negative digits in here somewhere. And they would they would break the total. So there is a five nine pair in here, and I know where the five goes. It goes there, and I know it's shading, which is therefore green. And now we've got to get this grey out. So that square becomes grey. That square becomes grey. The five is not available for the four on the dot. So this is three four as a pair, which does nothing, of course. Who would have expected any different? And this is a 1 9 pair now. I don't know the order, I don't think. Um, this is one of each, isn't it? But the, oh, okay, the 1 9 pair tells me that square's a 4. Therefore, that's a 4, that's a 3, and that's a 1, and that's a 2. And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Yeah. Well done, Ben 10. Not only have you produced a magnificent puzzle, but it had a three in the corner. Um, oh, what have we got in this nine cage in the middle now? And can we use anything? It's got four in it. I can see that. Has it got... And it's got six in it as well. It's got four and six which are both even. Um, okay, but the parity's fine, isn't it? It can't have nine in it, I don't think. If I've got nine in it, what combination of digits and negativity and positivity can we put in there to add up to, to nine? There's no way. There's no nine in there, so the nine in the box, the nine in the column has to go there. So that's nine, that's one. Now the 9 is positive, so that's green. This is now grey. <laughs> it doesn't... Well, okay, no, it allows me to extend this grey out one further. It still has to get out to connect with its friends. I'll tell you an unusual feature of this puzzle. Most puzzles that we see that are a hybrid of yin-yang and sudoku are very much do a lot of yin-yang, then do a lot of Sudoku, because the yin-yang's basically finished. Here, it's been not like that at all. It's been do a bit of yin-yang, do an awful lot of Sudoku and clever arithmetic trickery, and then go back and do some yin-yang. And now, and I don't know what's next, but ah, that's a two in the column. So this is two, this is four, that's not four. Um, okay. Good. Do we now know? What do we now know about the world? I don't know. It looks like this three cage wants to be a five eight cage to me. But I'm not sure I can prove that to you. Um, see, this could be six four with a negative one. Oh, or it could be 7, 6 with a negative 4. I don't believe it. So I literally do not know how this 9 cage works. Um, how weird is that? There are four 2s looking at the uh, middle box, though. So I can place a 2 in it. That puts 3 by Sudoku in the 4 cage, which is... Ah, no, that's great. That's great. Okay, there's a 3 in the 4 cage, but the 4 cage hasn't got a 1 in it. So it has to have one of each each type, which means the three is a deduction, which means this is a three seven pair. And that means I get a six at the top and a seven here, and a six here and a nine here. Um, I think that's gonna fix this cage as well. Let me just ponder this for a moment. Well, now we can't put, well, yes, the simple thing is to see this is seven and this is one, and therefore that square is the high digit. This square is the low digit. Um, well, no, that still hasn't done it, has it? Okay, but what what have we got left that's three apart? Nine. Nine would need a six, which it can't have. So this is five, eight. And the nine goes here in the column. 
and these squares we can now diagnose as one four and six and we've got a four six positive and a one negative so this square is therefore definitely positive <laughs> it doesn't help i don't think it helps <laughs> ah okay all right what have we got in this column then we've got one three uh whoopsie we've got one three and seven and that's not a one so this eight cage, uh, the eight cage could be one, three, four, you know, it, it's, it's possible it's one, three, four, and it's totally normal. And those would all be green and that would be gray and that would have to get out. Oh, goodness. Or, oh, all right, let's do these squares. So these are five and six. Oh, we still don't know them. Okay, they are five and six, but look, it doesn't tell us. So these squares are four, eight, nine, and that's not nine. Um, oh, okay. Oh, in fact, look, I've just now, <laughs> I've just been doing some work on this square and worked out that this square is most certainly not odd. Uh, because of parity. So again, look, we've got two odd digits here. And however we manipulate these, whether we add them together or deduct them, we're going to get an even number. So this has got to, in order to get us up to an eight total, this has got to be even, which means it's not nine. That gives us a four eight pair here, makes this a nine. But I then noticed that I've got a four there anyway. So that's an eight, that's a four. Now, does that do anything for us? or not uh, I suppose, well one thing it does is it places four here five there's sort of an x-wing of five so we can ask where five goes in row yeah we can ask where five goes in row four it's got to go here in this one cage um, where we need to put in threes sevens and nines into what remains and that's not nine so this is uh, it's a three seven pair in this row so the other digits need to be five, six, and eight. So this is six or eight into this square. What do we need in this column then? Is it literally six, seven? It is, it's six, seven, eight, and nine, isn't it? So, whoopsie, six, seven, eight, nine. This square here is not eight or nine. And and, 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 for our next trick, we will state that. Is it, is it yin-yang now? I've got a five in here. I'm trying to get up towards. Okay, so these two are odd. So I need this to be odd. So this is not six or eight. Again, it's parity. Whether I add these two digits together or deduct one from the other, they result in an even number. So this must be odd parity to make this overall add up to odd parity. So this is seven or nine, which is, so that is, that in fact is just a three, seven, nine triple, isn't it? So this square's a one, aha. So this square's a one, this square's a six, that square's a six, that square's a four. Five, that squares a five, that squares an eight. We're going to be able to do some shading in a moment, which will be exciting. That's an eight by Sudoku using this six. Um, there's a seven nine pair here, so that's a six. And we can do maths, can we, to get us out of trouble with this eight cage? How could this be a seven? No, it can't be a seven. There is no way of making this seven and making those three digits then add up or subtract to give eight. So that's a three, and this is a natural cage. It's fully green. Therefore, this is gray by two by two logic. This gray has to get out, so that's gray. I still don't know. Oh, I do now know what's going on with this because I need to get to positive eight. So I've got to make the, the gray cell the five this, look at this little region here, it's not connected to its friends, so both of those turn grey. 
this isn't connected to its friend so those this turns gray um, that's a seven by sudoku so that's a nine that's a three that's a three that's a seven that's a seven that's a nine that's the sudoku done but that's not that's not the whole of it is it right this backward j region needs to connect to its friends the three and the seven i suppose we know the order we need the seven to be the higher digit so this is the gray digit this needs to be green to connect this to its friends um, this is still not connected now what's going on with this one cage uh, oh that's fine it's got to be nine minus three and five so the three and five are negative that's green that's got to avoid a two by two that's got to avoid a two by two and that's got to connect it to its friends and there you have it at long last i have i think solved the puzzle and my and my timer went up today oh what does this say solved since may the 12th two solved since may the 12th three i don't know this is sven's new wizardry about how many times this puzzle's been solved so it's probably remembered the tester solves and then it's poked up to say that I don't know. I don't quite understand that. But anyway, 66 minutes on the clock, which is just over an hour. Um, well, that's just a brilliant puzzle. That's just a brilliant puzzle. It's quite hard, I think. I mean, if you didn't know anything about yin yang, you'd just be lost on that. But if you, even when you do, and I've done a lot of yin yang, I found that very tricky. I would love to know whether I've missed something or whether it was just very... It's It's really, there's a lot of tight mathematics i was having to do on this row what was going on I, I mean proving there was a five in one of those two cells seemed to be important didn't it and that was far from obvious that that was something i should be focusing on at all um but i love the balance of this puzzle i love the fact it genuinely was a hybrid you had to you had to really do yin yang sudoku arithmetic yin yang you know you had to it wasn't just do one puzzle then do what's left as the other puzzle it was really well integrated ben 10 take a bow loved it i hope you i hope you've enjoyed your saturday night with 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 me and make sure you have a go at yesterday's puzzle it's much easier much easier and boost that solution count thank you so much for watching and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic <laughs>